Hollywood, Florida is a city with an ancient secret. Just north of Miami stand five of Earth's most sacred trees. The information you are about to hear is not common knowledge and is likely to ruffle some feathers. But ultimately, I believe this research will result in the spiritual enrichment of not only South Florida, but the entire planet. This presentation centers around the work of modern-day mystic Haladara Carl Labi. It was Haladara who uncovered a monumental mystery built into the very foundation of South Florida. Our story begins in Arts Park, a public park located at Young Circle in Hollywood, Florida. The park is contained within a roundabout that predates the city itself, known as the Hollywood Circle. Inside this holy wood circle are five sacred baobab trees, which we are told are native to Africa, not Florida, oddly enough. The immediate issue to be had with these trees is the fact that they are simply too large for their given age, and we are not the only ones to recognize this. The uh, connection with our uh, ancient baobab tree and ancient baobab tree and... The trees in this park are said to be between 70 and 100 years old, so why on earth would the mayor of Hollywood call them ancient? Despite baobabs of similar size in India being aged 500 years, 1,000 years, and upwards, we are told these trees appeared in the park in the 1930s. As you will see, this is just one small piece of the grand mystery surrounding the Hollywood Circle. But why would somebody lie about the age of a tree? Well, what if I told you that no official history even exists for these trees? The three sources I could find online as to their origin all contradict each other. But as you will begin to see, the motive for such a deceit is not financial, but spiritual in nature. The Baobab tree, which is worshipped by Africans and Madagascans, is also known as the mythical Kalpavriksha tree in India, where a handful of ancient specimens grow today. A quick Google search reveals this to be true. This fact seems to be lost on Wikipedia, which mysteriously neglects the Baobab from its list of possible, wish-fulfilling Kalpavriksha trees. Despite showing pictures of its distinct trunk and flowers being worshipped in India under the name of Kalpavriksha. Altogether, there are less than 10 Kalpavrikshas in the entire Indian subcontinent. In the comparatively tiny south tip of Florida, however, there are at least double that amount. Furthermore, there is a number of unique factors that distinguish the Baobabs of Hollywood Circle some of which I am certain will completely blow your mind. These qualifications serve to prove that the holy wood of Hollywood Circle is indeed the original Kalpavriksha tree. The views expressed in this video do not necessarily reflect my own. Now enjoy. Welcome to Florida, baby. Introducing Dr. Narco Longo. Before we proceed with this controversial presentation, I would like to share the amazing story of how I became aware of the assertion that a legendary Kalpavriksha tree was located right here in Hollywood, Florida. The story began when I met my new friend, Andrew who performs sound healing at my bookstore. 
Andrew had received a forwarded message in a spiritual community group text from a person claiming to have located five real-life Kalpavriksha trees near Miami. For those who don't know, the Kalpavriksha tree is a quote-unquote wish-fulfilling tree. First mentioned in ancient Sanskrit literature, while often regarded as mythical or wholly allegorical, the Kalpavriksha tree is worshipped today in India in the form of the Boabab tree. It is taught that there are actually five varieties of the mythical Kalpavriksha trees. So is it any coincidence that there are five Kalpavriksha trees growing in the Hollywood circle? The fruit of the two trees in the circle that do bear fruit indicate that they are likely separate subspecies of Baobab. Without fruit from the other three trees, we cannot determine how many varieties of Baobab are actually represented in the circle. It is also not entirely clear whether Florida's Baobab population constitutes a separate subspecies in itself. Back to our story. Regarding the text message, my interest was immediately piqued and I requested the original sender's information, but this could not be obtained. However, I made a note to go visit these trees when I would be doing some filming in the area, then went about my business. But when the day came, I ended up filming three videos in a single day and did not have enough time or energy to stop by the trees. And seeing as how the Hollywood Baobabs were already briefly shown in my Giant Trees of Florida video, I decided to skip the trees and drive the hour home to Palm Beach. Along the way, however, we made a quite fateful stop. After ordering to go from a vegan restaurant in an area we do not frequent, my girlfriend ran inside to pick up the food. By chance, an employee at the restaurant, whom we had never met before, began making small talk with her. His name was Tirtapada Dasa. We'll call him Tirta for short. She told him what we had done that day, but made no mention of the Kalpavriksha trees, as I had not even told her about them. Then, out of nowhere, Tirta relayed to my girlfriend the same information about the Hollywood Kalpavriksha trees that Andrew had received in the group text earlier. In fact, Tirta actually got goosebumps when he heard where she had been that day. She then returned to the car and told me what he had said to her. I was shocked and immediately got goosebumps. And keep in mind, this was only an hour after deciding not to stop and see the trees ourselves. I then called Tirta over to the car, introduced myself, and was given a phone number for the original sender of the text. It was then that I put my other projects on the back burner and turned my sights on the Baobabs of Hollywood. I called the number and spoke to a man with a thick Eurasian accent and a name I could neither spell nor pronounce. We arranged a time and place to meet, and this is where we begin our incredible adventure. These trees are special, you know why? This one I haven't told you yet. Somehow or another, US-1 highway is going through this whole circle, right? And if you look on the map... Hang on, hang on. Sorry. Yeah, it, it's, it's almost like time. a power center. Or like you, out of all highways in the world, in America, you got so many. How many numbers? Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of highways. Then US-1 is the number one highway. All right, can you say that from the beginning? All right. That'll be the all last right. time. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. So we got all these trees here. We got the main tree there. We got the double tree there. And then two trees over there. So this one, you have US Highway coming straight through those trees. If you look there, they're perfectly positioned. And it goes straight through. So you can look how is the US 1 Highway. Why they call it number one? Why not two, three? And also it goes all the way up to New York almost the border of Canada so it's like a lot of people speculate it can be the energy channel right and all the other trees I searched there is two more trees a tree here in the Miami area they are also very close to US 1 highway so it can be like you know one way or another the the secret of US like a power also come from here because if the water fountain was here then all you know any desire you have can be fulfilled Right, so you have desire, world power, whatever you want. You come here. 
you want happy marriage, children, you come here. <laughs> Probably that's almost impossible, yeah, that's but yeah. Wow. That's so that yeah, that's one incredible like synchronicity coincidence is like how is that possible you can look on a map there is no circle on highways ever and then they have some story oh the Hollywood the person who you know planned this that young guy how he made this circle but you can look on a picture the circle was already there when the hurricane cleaned the place so something there doesn't click not till 1915 did Broward County come into um, existence and then Hollywood was 1925 but prior to 1925 Joe Young was here as early as 1921-22 scouting out this area and gobbling up parcels and assembled what we have today as the modern day Hollywood which is much bigger than it was in the 20s. Joseph Young was a very energetic salesman who um, was well liked by everybody that he did business with and he uh, did some developing in Long Beach and when he came to Hollywood he saw the potential to create something from nothing. And literally there was nothing here. To the north you had the Danish farmers that were farming tomatoes, hence the name Dania because it was settled by the Danes. Um, so when he got busy and was creating the city, it was originally, the circle was originally called Circle Park. If you look at the early map of the city of Hollywood, you'll see Dr. Joan has said, it's almost like a classic Beau Arts design. All the streets arch out around the littler circles in West Hollywood. So the layout is incredible. All right. Yeah, let's go check out this. So if you look you over the history, over the history, this Hollywood circle continuously refreshed. They like they, they changed the design of the trees, yeah. trees and uh, all the you know the layout of this. So this is the latest one, right? With this little uh, water fountain, you can see the stripes going through all the way. Here, I show you. Before I even tell you, you have to almost experience it. So if you look here, this almost entire thing is targeted towards that tree, right? Yeah. That's the main tree, that's the only one. Around that tree is some four or five, eight different metal pillars. No one knows what they are. And other trees don't have it. So some, uh, it looks like a light, but it's not a light. So look, there's another one. This thing there, you go and read what's uh, written there. Doesn't make any sense. If someone can unlock it, surely it's a code. Like 2007, they make this park. Oh yeah, that's weird. Isn't it? Yeah. Dream wave, walkway, sound poles. I am so thrilled to be able to be in our arts park with our fabulous, fabulous Let's Go Tahoe <laughs> from Japan. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Um, Thank you. I want to express on behalf of our whole city government and really a, a grateful co community, uh, we think that your uh, contribution to the beautification and the education of our park through your art in public places, um, a fountain, the, the uh, connection with our uh, ancient baobab tree and ancient baobab tree. The connection to our founder. It's a, it's a most interesting concept that you had that created more than just uh, art in a park, but helped to create the arts park to truly be an arts park from the, from the, it's foundation on up and I want to welcome you here I want to thank you and anything else you want to add that my work is specific to the place where this artwork is installed 
And mostly I would like to incorporate like history and the characteristics of the site for the artwork. Also, we like to incorporate the, uh, the design around the artworks. So that site specificity, which means that the artwork is for the particular place. That artwork cannot be moved to any other place. So this artwork is for you. It was not until we had concluded filming at the park that I was able to research the artist responsible for this installation, Ritsuko Taho. Mrs. Taho seems to have left the public eye entirely in recent years, and her website's domain had expired. But after stumbling onto that obscure video, I found a website that actually had some information about her work at the park. I frankly could not believe what I was about to discover, and I quote, as you stroll around the 10-acre park, you will hear a harmony of harps and ocean waves. Believe it or not, this mesmerizing sound is actually coming from the baobab tree. Artists designed some sound poles which convert the tree's live energy waves into music. End quote. Haladara himself showed us these sound poles, but had no idea about their significance. So keep in mind, at the time of filming, he knew none of what you are about to hear when developing his theory. I will now read from americansforthearts.org. Six powdered-coated aluminum sound poles encircle the baobab tree and play a stereo soundtrack generated by the same life wave energy patterns that drive the fountain jets as expressed through the instrumentation of harps, wind, and ocean sounds. End quote. Yes, you heard that right. Not only does the tree's life energy control the music played through the speakers, but it also controls the jet patterns of the fountain pointed out to us by Holodara. Quote, The artist accomplished this by measuring the life wave energy of a giant baobab tree, converting that data into water jet patterns for the fountain, then representing the founder's dream by creating a dream wave walkway to link his statue to the fountain, and lastly through an e-sculpture component with live webcams focused on the baobab tree and fountain." End quote. To my knowledge, the live stream is no longer operational, and there's no trace of it on the internet, so it may have never even existed. Quote, the programmed operation of the fountain represents one year of life wave energy patterns of the baobab tree. Patterns scroll left to right along 60 water jets, shooting water according to the rhythm, a numerical range of data collected from the tree. For special occasion, the fountain can be switched to display the actual real-time energy patterns of the baobab tree in a special live performance. A measuring device captures the data and transmits it instantaneously by a fiber optic cable to the computer running the water jets. Depending on season, climatic conditions, and time of day, the patterns are always dynamic and unpredictable. An ornamental ceremonial rope of rice fiber adorns the baobab tree, signifying the tree's important status and identifying it as a place where the creative spirit is welcome. It will be replaced each year with a new rope, giving the community an opportunity to participate in an annual celebration tied to the changing of the rope." End quote. While no tree roping traditions are found in Africa, this practice does exist in India, as trees regarded as sacred often have their trunks wrapped in thread and branches ornamented with heavy rope. This tradition is directly linked with the Kalpa Vriksha tree. It's as though the architects of these installations were trying to tell us something. Quote, Lastly, the radial walkway links the fountain to the tree. End quote. The word radial stuck out to me, as radium is a topic that I find myself returning to over and over, especially when researching the healing qualities of Florida's one-of-a-kind spring water. 
Radium is also rumored to cause extreme growth and prolonged life in both animals and vegetation. I think it's safe to say we are barking up the right tree here. However, radium will have to be discussed in a video of its own. Let us analyze the name of the park and its fountain. A millennia is a thousand years. Mankind was known to live up to a thousand years in the Old Testament. Likewise, at the time of European arrival, the native Floridians were observed to live well over 300 years. It is no coincidence that the Fountain of Youth was believed to be located here. Millennium, however, actually means thousands plural, not just one. Baobabs can not only live for thousands of years, but also store thousands of gallons of potable water in their trunks. In times of drought, entire villages can survive off a single baobab tree. The word spring being used in the name of this installation also bears significance, as this central fountain is not actually a spring, so why call it one? So what I really speculate, maybe this one was the water of youth, the fountain of youth with those trees, yeah? The trees, maybe there were a whole lot of those trees. And then the roots and the system of these trees make the water in such a way that it gives you like long life or like, like the legend says, it kind of stops you where you are. So you, you will age very slow motion after that. So once you have it. And now in all pictures, you can see there was a fountain here, right in the center. And now there's a mountain. So something is under this mountain. What's underneath? Why they make a mountain here? That's then this little building there, this has been here since, you know, from the beginning. They haven't changed that. That's some pumping house, pumping system. But yeah, if you zoom in on this one from above, what are you going to get? You get the uh, Illuminati eye, right? All seeing eye. Yeah. And also, if you go up from this, right, straight up, you have another circle there, and then you have another one. So there's three major circles. Hollywood is so unique that um, the founder of our city was actually from Long Beach, California, and our entire city was planned. And in the early 20s, to have a city be planned was not the norm. Cities grew up organically, like Dania and Fort Lauderdale and Pompano. They were really farming communities, and the neighborhoods kind of grew up around there. Here you have a guy that bought up a lot of square miles in this part of South Florida, Southeast Florida, and designed and laid out the city perfectly. And that's why when you get to Hollywood and you drive around that big circle in downtown and you see that cute little downtown and then the two other circles, the beautiful Lakes Historic District, you get a feeling that there's something special about this place. And it's because it was carefully laid out and plotted with streets and avenues and, and public parks and access to things that you don't get in other cities. So that's what kind of separates Hollywood. And if you drive all the way to the last circle, you have one big, massive, like a temple looking Stargate building that looks straight up Illuminati building, like pyramid style. Yeah, all the numbers are there, the 666, all this stuff is there. And in the center is a big, like kind of iron spiral. That's how you invoke the ghost, the spirit. You come here or shoot them out. And it's right there. You can, even if you're going on a highway, you can see this thing like a dome. So it's not only this, this is probably the center and there's another one and another one. And if you look at the second circle, they have all these new city buildings, they're all kind of blocking each other. It's another, it looks like energetic block or something. The building before was so beautiful. It looked like a Roman style building. Wow. So yeah, it seemed to be the whole complex. And if you go this way down, right, you go by the beach. <laughs> You see those two massive canals, right? On both sides. Did you guys have a look at it? Okay, so got, it's so easy to see. You can look on a map. Yeah. You just put your location on the map, right? You're in Hollywood and you just zoom out, right? And what are you going to see? You're going to see a two really like unusual uh, canals, artificial canals probably 
Yeah, you have to add it to the I'll, video. I'll add it, don't worry. Yeah, but I, I'll give it to you to look so you know what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, yeah. They're, you know like, I mean? old, they're like cul de sacs. Yeah, they're on both sides, and the avenue is in the center. That's the first circle. Then you have a circle with, uh, with the buildings of the Hollywood uh, city. And then the last circle is that mystic kind of pyramid looking building. So it looks like it's a trinity and then a canals on both sides. I think the hidden gem is the lakes neighborhood. People just don't know about that. Even people in Aventura, we're getting a lot of people from North Miami that are moving to the lakes because they don't know it's here because you go up Federal Highway or you go down A1A and or you go down Hollywood Boulevard to the beach. Nobody bothers to go north or south and north or south are two gigantic lakes. Joe Young does it big. The two largest artificial lakes ever built in Florida when he dredged these lakes to build the lake's neighborhood. So Lots of dredging was being done in turn of the century Florida, but nothing on this scale was being made purely for the sake of real estate development. And as you just heard, these were the largest man-made lakes in Florida at the time of their supposed creation. And just so you can understand the magnitude of this project, they actually got the same guy who oversaw the alleged construction of the Panama Canal to oversee the making of the Hollywood lakes. Are you starting to see how little sense this all makes? This is simply too much infrastructure being invested in what was ultimately a waste of time. Hollywood would never become the diamond it was envisioned to be. So if you look at the east coast of southeast Florida, it was mostly mangrove swamps. So when you go to Westlake and you canoe and paddleboard around, that was the lake's neighborhood. Joe Young built those two gigantic lakes, filled the entire area and created the lake's neighborhood. And he laid it out in such a way that the heads of the lake are for public access. So you can drive around and when, I remember the first time I saw North Lake, I was driving with a friend from South Broward High School and I went, what the hell is, what? It's this big, beautiful waterway, and it's incredible. And the houses are the most historic houses in the lakes are on Harrison and Tyler, two of the most beautiful streets in the lakes. They're extra wide with royal palms on both sides, and you have everything from masonry vernacular, Spanish eclectic, Spanish Morin, tropical modern, and today. It's all there, and we even have adobe, and we have craftsmen. Everything, every architectural style is represented in the lakes. And unless you get off of the beaten path and drive around that neighborhood, you're not going to know it's there. To me, that's our hidden gem. Then if you look at these buildings up there, like all the names are very feminine. Like they say Cirque Hotel or Three Hotel, you can see it's hidden. If you look this one, that's maybe the best one. What do you see? This number, 1818, the number of this building. Do you see the name of goddess? It's in the evening time, you can see it crystal clear. Now it's like hidden. Do you see the name of goddess? 1818. What's the name of goddess? Isis. Yes. Oh. Yes. In the evening time with lights, you can see it's like Isis right away, you can see. So all can these... You point at it? Yeah, right there. You can see 1818 Park Avenue, right? And if you look the way it's designed, it's actually ISIS. Because all the secret societies, they really worship feminine energy, feminine aspect of God. And that's their rift with the Catholic Church because they are all about masculine domination. So that's more or less underneath. But yeah, let's have a look at those trees. So this one gives fruit. One of the f only ones in the whole world that actually gives fruit. And a lot of people come in trying to get those fruits and try to get the seeds, but not even every fruit actually has a seed. So you can get 10 fruits and maybe one seed is there. And even this, you can read from books to make that tree grow. It's like, it's a magic miracle if they grow. And here, if you can search, no one knows who planted these trees. There is no official timing. Oh, this person come and put the tree. None of this, they just seemingly appeared. So how they come here, no one knows. So are they using seeds just to try to plant new ones, or are they using it for other purposes, like medicinal? Oh yeah, you can use it many ways. You can also use it energetically, like carry it with you and make a talisman out of it, because it's like the power of the wood. You know, different kind of wood has different power, and this wood has enough, like most power, in one way. 
if you look like like from an ancient perspective you have mother shiva shiva parvati picture and whenever they sit under the tree and you ask what is that tree that's the tree it's called kalpa vriksha tree and people tell you oh it's banyan tree but actually no it's not banyan tree there's like seven eight holy trees in india and they are different and different deities uh, prefer different trees so buddha sit on a banyan tree yes but Shiva and Sankacharya, for example, they sit on the Kalpa Riksha tree. And yeah, then there is like a number one legend how this tree arrived here on a planet Earth. Like it's not supposed to grow here. So there is like a Leela 5,000 years ago. There was a, like a personality. It's named Krishna. So there's a lot of debate who he was. Was he king? Was he God? So you can look his past time. So one of the things he did, he had like many, many different wives. So one day there was like a drama with the wives and he had to pacify one of his wives, basically. Long story short. So he take that wife, put it on his carrier and he go to heavenly planets with the mystic power and steal the tree and fight with all the like titans. You guys call it titans. But basically the heavenly beings just to bring the tree down and then the tree got a curse that you won't okay you can have a tree but you can't have the fruits so there we go we got a tree still no fruit and that tree is still in india so supposedly the original ones one or two are in india they have taken from heavenly planets and now they've been a little bit scattered here and there but so far i found only like 50 maximum on the internet you know and are they real trees you know india there i think there's two or three and Florida has, I mean, Miami has nine, West Palm Beach is supposed to have one. That's it. Supposedly, if you guys find more, let me know. Any one of you watching this too, it's like, can you find these trees anywhere? Because these trees are very unique. So there is, there's so much more to it actually. If you first, if you look the flower of the tree, the flower of the tree looks like an arrow of Cupid. You guys know who's Cupid? Cupid is like a god of love. So there's a whole philosophy. When he shoots the arrows, how it interferes with your psychology and how you start to feel. There's like all the different stages, one stage to another to like a full obsession basically. So this, Flowers, they are very similar to this uh, Kandarpa's arrows. So when you have a look now, it's already fruits, but you come here springtime, you see the flowers and when they dry, they look like, like a perfect arrows. I, ha I will send you, you know, pictures of the flowers. It's incredible. They lo really look like with the, with the hooks, everything. Incredible. So now, eventually, finally, you'll have that fruit, right? this one so it has to look like this not like a coconut both trees look like coconut and they are huge but they're not looking like this this is very important so this is the could you explain the difference between the baobab and oh yes so the baobab tree uh, their fruits are big they like coconut style they are like same kind of material you can say same kind of tree, but the fruit is totally different. So some of the Indian books are saying that this, uh, they, they are coming from Africa, true, and they are genetically modified millions of years ago with the purpose of make them grow in Africa because the legend says you cannot grow them. So there was like powerful kings who had their own mystics to make these trees grow. And then they, they got a modification. So is it genetically, mystically, not the modern, but mystically engineered tree, while this one is original one. Of all the baobab fruit that I could find on the internet, the central baobab tree of the Hollywood circle by far produces the straightest and most narrow. Dare I say, the straightest and most narrow in the world. When it gives that fruit, because the whole flower to this, final this, 
and then you have to look this is like a velvet and the flowers look like gold so the, the ancient books are saying the flowers of Kalpa Riksha tree look like gold so you have the gold velvet you have the green velvet the whole effect you have the stems they look just like same described the common arrows yeah, and then you come here basically and you make a make a wish whatever you want from life It doesn't uh, like it can be just a one item can be situation can be just like you want progress in your life So then what's gonna happen is that gonna be delivered to your table? It's like oh, I want a new car and you go home a new car is waiting like no That's not uh, how it works the way it works Is that you have a desire and that tree is gonna give you the power to go and get it because we have all desires, but we're not usually empowered to get it. It's like we don't have enough energy, enough enthusiasm, enough motivation, all these things. So that tree, more or less, once you have a desire, it will encourage you to go after these things and help you all the ways. But st you still have to do the work, basically, right? And I did do that test, that item test. By the way, with one of the trees, when I found out, I'm like, all right, let's test. Does it work or not? So I made like direct item that I need phone and a computer one two not highlighting anything uh, maybe I highlight iPhone maybe but basically I just wrote on the paper I did a little like um, like a worship ceremony it's very simple you can use water you can use incense you offer something tree and you make a wish very simple you can walk around tree 24 hours got a phone got a computer boom put on my table found the phone on the road and yeah gold pride of mine went to india gave me a computer just like that boom so yeah it works but it, you shouldn't yeah abuse it like this yeah you can test it with your little things and then really try to see what you really want from life and then be careful what you're asking kind of yeah because it might become true yes yeah, so this is this is part of it definitely like a big big part of it they're trying to hide because once people find out that this is a real thing, if it is, yeah, we're, we're still kind of investigating, right? But there is so many signs that they're trying to hide it, some reason or another, right? So once people find this out, this whole neighborhood can change. Because in India, these people are serious. We are still kind of skeptical or maybe even if we try, have little results, still we're skeptical. But the Indian people, they find out, they kind of come and worship this tree with no end. That you might have a line, you know, because there's millions. And many of their books are speaking about that tree. Many, many, many books. Even like our little temple, I can pull one of the books, show you it's there, it's written. Oh, it's on that planet, these trees are grown. So they are very familiar with it. It's just, they think oh, all these trees are gone. Not one is left. And they even argue with each other, which one is it? Because there's none of the originals are there. So they kind of like trying to replace it, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you look all the Hollywood building, I um, mean the circle pictures and you see this building is always there. It's a hundred years ago it was there, 50 years, 60 years, everything they change, everything they change, every tree, everything. But this building always there. If you look at the history of South Florida, it's not long. You are really talking about 100 years. So for us to have something that could be 80 years old is ancient. 80 years old is ancient. Prior to that, nothing was here. So when you see something that old, you're really looking at the beginning of South Florida. And you, it's almost like a window into what life was like when you're looking at a historic structure that's still standing and people are still using it. You can go inside that building and imagine what life was like 100 years ago in South Florida. We have some real treasures in South Florida, but we also have lost a tremendous amount of treasures, especially in Hollywood, unfortunately. So surely it is some big like uh, system underneath some sort of water system that this is crucial they never change and yeah probably not they harvest i'm pretty sure they harvest from this tree somehow that nectar and keep it for themselves more or less why is that a neighborhood so designed down while all miami is all about like pimping things up right it's all about the flash all about nice building all about the latest designers and the nice lighting you come here, Hollywood, it's the ugliest buildings everywhere. The whole road, you take this one after the um, railway, it's literally like a competition. Who has the ugliest building on the road? It's like, I can't believe they actually give permission to build this stuff. There's another one there, like a monster. It's like, 
they're trying to keep people away from this place. Then they bought all the uh, recovery centers, both sides, bought all the ghettos here, all the druggies, you know, selling drugs, both sides you can buy. If you have lived in Hollywood as long as I have, you know that some people call it Holly weird, and the weirdest population seems to gravitate towards that circle. I don't know why, but when the old Publix was still in business, I always told people, if you're ever bored and it's a weekend and you don't know what to do with yourself, park your car in front of that Publix and get some popcorn. Because I was never disappointed in the strangeness that I witnessed in my entire life at that Publix. And I thought, they, they got rid of the bus station because I said it must be the bus station that's, well, no matter what they did, they're still here. And so I, I don't know what happened on that spot, but it does seem to attract, like, Venice, California. I, I don't know. Why, you know, and all the other places, they make so nice. They go out of the way to, to make it all like welcoming for tourists, right? Welcoming for people coming here. But here, they don't want anyone to be here for some reason. So why? Uh, is it a coincidence? Is it a plan? That's another one. Like, it looks like something they like almost preserving for themselves, maybe. Right, because now there's another one like uh, information coming in. Hollywood is getting two billion dollar investment. We'll push all the infrastructure, all the buildings, everything up. So maybe now is the time they reveal something. Who knows? But yeah, it's you can see so much emphasis on Miami and beautiful beach here in Hollywood is all decked out. But they don't somehow want to make it really look nice. They want to make it kind of fast and it's not interesting kind of thing. So. Yeah, yeah, fountain of youth. That was the number one reason Europeans come here. Yeah. It wasn't the gold, like they already got all the no, gold. And there was no gold in Florida. Right, it like... It was all in Cuba, Mexico. There you go. But they, they held on to Florida for 300 years. Even yeah. though it, it cost... Them, cost more. It cost them money. Oh, really? Every other Spanish territory huh. made money. Lots of money. Fruit, huh, lots huh, of huh. But we're told, supposedly, Florida had no gold, no silver, no gems, uh, and nothing. no fruit. That All right. Even though you could grow things here, no one, there was no way to um, plow land. It was too swampy. You know? yeah. uh, for sure. That's That was probably the gem. Florida was probably the gem, the most important gem. Yes. And then they... Uh, as always are so good in misdirecting people they always put your attention somewhere else so you they can work on dating and cash you know in on that all the indigo came from florida too oh really so they wanted to hide the source of their indigo wow yeah i totally believe it like and the number one thing see when you got all the money in the world you got all the power in the world all these things so what is your number one fear then what is your number one problem then time right because sooner or later you know time is on your case then you want a solution for it and surely that's why they send all these boats out there it's like go find this water it looks like it's somewhere out there it looks like we, we got the maps from this territorial times i'm sure they knew exactly what the, where they're going what they're gonna do the whole plan yeah. right and now they give us some Disneyland story oh yeah columbus got lost in the sea like now nah. well you know columbus had a navigator Ah. So why do you need a navigator for somewhere you've never been before? <laughs> and he was Irish. Oh. So he was the one Irish man on the whole journey. And that's because the Irish, just like the, uh, the Berbers and the Basque, they come from Atlantis. Okay. So the Atlanteans, the Phoenicians, they'd been to America. The, sure. the Phoenicians knew America was there, right. and they, yeah. they kept it from the Romans, so the Romans didn't even know. Yeah, the, the thing with these Venetians looks like that their number one power really was their knowledge and kind of their might, the, the boldness of navigating the seas. Because no one, you go to India, people are scared to death of ocean. Like, they, there is no high-rise buildings next to ocean. People are like, they go in the waves and they come out right away. No one goes swimming in the ocean, only Westerners. And they look, take pictures of Westerners, like, oh my God, look at these crazy people. 
same thing in Bali, everywhere, like people revere ocean. They don't even, you know, like it's so big, you don't know, it might come any moment, right? In yeah. Australia, literally, sometimes people get lost in the ocean because it's so powerful. They walk on water and poof, some of them are gone. So, Venetians, yeah, they got that might get on a boat and go anywhere they want. So, I think, you know, over the time they probably got very corrupted, you know, and then yeah. Yeah. cash in on this thing here. All desires kind of it's like a hub you know I send you a few other pictures maybe maybe you already know these ley lines they all end up in one in Florida right yeah. down Miami Hollywood area Florida is the the naval chakra yeah, of the, the planet yeah, so. the North Pole yeah. is the, the crown of course Florida is the naval okay so here is another story we're speaking about like like atlanteans and all like how the people end up here and especially the natives who live in south america there is a mystery with this calendar right they got this calendar i, I actually have it here this this one right so that calendar is not an ordinary cal calendar it doesn't work like one to twelve it doesn't work like zodiac it actually has a system of golden spiral so it works totally different the numbers are heads and basically they kind of like a mystified how these people had so advanced knowledge is extremely advanced it's more advanced than than our astrology in one way it's kind of like a computer stuff like endless so how did they get it where did they get it where did they all show up in a jungle no auto like do all this fine gold jewelry like so fine technologies and same time like jungle you know like travel so how where this blend come from where these people arrive so there, there is like uh, some stories in uh, Indian books, ancient books, how 5,000 years ago they had the most incredible forest um, close by Delhi. And that, that forest was about to be sacrificed for specific reasons. So the whole forest was about to burn on fire. And in that forest was every single species of life or plant and beast and everything. So, and in that forest also, like, they had this advanced civilization. So as this forest was about to be sacrificed, that civilization made a deal with these warriors. Oh, shit. So they made a deal with the warriors, Krishna and Arjun. They were about to sacrifice this huge forest because the karmic reasons. And then on a the last moment, the people, the civilization who live in that forest, who were very like beautiful people, very advanced people, but they live like forest life, like a tribal advanced society. They made a deal with those warriors so they can migrate all out to the new forest. And so the book said they all migrate to South America where it's a similar forest. Because the whole thing is about forest and plants and all this. like the plant medicine and shamanism and they are all about it they need a forest to be like to do the things they do so yeah there is a speculation maybe that calendar maybe it's coming from that forest from india from india kandava forest i believe it was now, called now, now it's desert it's all gone well you know um maya yes. is is a name in hindu oh yes, yes. and Ma then maya ah. is the name of buddha's mother Oh yes. Now, yes. now, Guatemala ah. is the name of Buddha himself. Sure. Guatemala. Guatemala oh. and Maya is Guatemala. Beautiful. Guatemala. Love it. Love it. This is really good. I never thought Guatemala, Guatemala Buddha. Oh yeah, makes perfect sense. And Guatemala, Guatemalans, ah. they look like little Buddhas. Oh wow! Oh wow! I wish they could find a little Buddha temple there. That will be like so easy to understand wow well with the maya maya has is a very interesting word in sanskrit so maya is one is like uh, one translation and that what is not so you look at here there's all the plants but maybe i made a trick in your head and you see the plants but actually nothing is there so that is like a, what is called maya something what is not or illusion so you have different kind of mayas that you have a durga is also called maya like a maya devi goddess of maya like this but then there is also another maya it's called maya dhanava and he's the architect of all the demoniac like race so ancient world is like two kind of people devas and demons devas are those who accept the creator demons are those who don't and they live their life 
right? So those are like uh, devas are kind of accept the high authority, demons have make their own authority, and then they fight with each other basically. So Maya Dhanava is one of the best of all demons, and he's an expert architect. He can make cities, and he actually made that Indra Prashtha city after they burned the forest. And Maya Dhanava was one of the demons who got a direct, uh, what do you call it, uh, permission to leave the forest. And his pay was to make this incredible city, Indra Prashtha. And he's famous of making all kinds of like illusory stuff, mystic stuff. And I would not be surprised if all our technology and things like this, some of it is designed by Maya Dhanava. Like, he's expert with this. And here too, it's not like he's always a bad guy. He can make incredible, beautiful buildings. Let's go close to this. Sure. So you can see the size. Yeah, this tree is so fat. Can you believe? That's how I discovered these trees. I'm like, how can this tree be so fat? That's crazy. And then they tell you, oh, this is 70 years ago they planted or something. Like, yeah. huh, what? Same tree in India, same size, 5,000 years. Yeah, and here, I mean, you look, the preciseness of the road through the trees. I mean, what? It's almost one-to-one. -one. It's not like they grow a little bit this way or that way. It's surely like an energy. We, we even were speculating, maybe it's like an energetic channel. They make a mountain, some put a block on all this American development, you know. It can be something like very simple, but you make one block here, 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 and as you get stuck. Because, yeah, that highway, you know, the effect of I-95 shooting all the way to Coconut Grove, it's, it's like a magic show. It's like a, you arrive somewhere. It's, Coconut Grove is another one. It's, something is there. I don't know what is there. Yeah, something, something is there. there. Peacocks. Peacocks Paradise, are there. Paradise had yeah. pe peacocks, banyan trees, and um, coconuts, mango. There you go. And that's South yeah, that's that is, Miami. South that is Miami. Miami. Coconut <laughs> Creek, Coral Gables. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, tr I think maybe even similar place like this, you know, something very special was in Gokuna Grove because people there, they, they just almost naturally hide. They walk around there. They swear they never leave the place. You ask them, oh, come South Beach or oh, come Hollywood. You ask them, come anywhere. They don't want to go anywhere. They just want to live in that little Gokuna Grove bubble. Why? No one can explain. Oh yeah, yeah, so you know, you know, that Coconut Grove Farmer's Market is like an ultimate Miami meeting place without, you know, without the music and club and all this, like when people just socialize. Yeah, and all of them will tell you something is going on Coconut Grove. Like I have one Indian lady, she come Bombay, big business lady. She now like lives there, knows everyone there and she swears it's some holy thing. She come from a holy place, she don't, you know. You don't want to go anywhere out of that little bubble. It's crazy. Do you know about the flag of Miami? Like yeah. Coral Gables? It is the Indian flag. Yes. I've... And it's also the Irish flag. It's also Irish. I know. I found this from your channel. I tell all my people, they're like, what? What? Yeah. They're Gables. like shocked. Just when I left right now, there's one photographer guy. He's a professional. He's living in Fort Lauderdale like a long time. He I made a Facebook post. He's like, what the heck? They're all puzzled yeah yeah it's i think this place in coconut grove there is some connection something Should be there. okay so you want to know what i do personally so i'm part like i used to live in india i used to study bhakti yoga philosophy so yoga there's many different kind in general you got three kyan bhakti karma kyan is knowledge karma is like activity and bhakti is the heart. So it's all about the knowledge, how you develop the heart, how you develop the emotional power and the soul power, yes. So that's what bhakti yoga is about. And yeah, as I was in India and also before, I always studied mysticism and specifically tarot. 
So I've been studying tarot maybe 20 years or so. Started in New York City. And yeah, so long story short, I ended up designing my own deck. So it's an update of all the Mystic decks. You got um, Raider Way Tarot, that is a um, Golden Dawn, Secret Society kind of presentation of all the Mystic Arts in Europe. And then the Crowley is kind of the update of it. The Tarot deck. Yeah, the dot deck is beautiful, incredible tarot, always works, reliable, like more than any other in a way. Then the next one you can say Hermetic Tarot was a good update, more revealing what the, the esoteric tarot is about, right? Because the, one is the divination, but tarot is also used for all the mystic studies and also for magic and manifestation. So if you know how to build like an astral temple out of tarot cards, you can manifest all your desires or you can like make your life happen basically. And that's what all the, the Masons are doing. Freemasons, what are they temples? Of, that's what they do. They do ceremonies. And uh, you can use the cards to do the ceremony. So back to my cards. So that is like an update from the Hermetic Tarot, Crowley Tarot. So all the things that they have on it, pretty much on my cards. And the new things that have come out now in the last 50 years, new information basically from like South America to ancient Vedic world to China, like what is, you know, what is their ancient beliefs? So I've coded them on a deck one way or another. So they are black and white. They like covered with mystic symbols, more like, um, 33 different systems. So you can study I Ching, you can study Kabbalah, you can study, study for example, Arabic Kabbalah. People don't know, but like Arabia used to be the center of mysticism before, and now it's all covered up. It's all Islam, uh, Al Haram, not allowed. But before, Persia was the center of mysticism. Okay. Yes. Persia was the center of mysticism. Yes. I just want to reset this. Yes. Good stuff. Okay. What's your reasoning for doing it in black and white? Good question. Black and white, one reasoning. One is like to get it done fast, right? Because colors take a long time. But there is actually also a reason. This world is actually like a black and white world. We think it's all color. But actually, it's like black and white compares to what they speak, uh, spiritual worlds are. So in the ancient world, they tell you there's two kind of worlds. There's a world of time, and we are living in a world of time. So it means everything goes in a cycle. Everything is a content, it's like a video game. It's always changing. And that's why it's like zeros and ones, people that believe are in the simulation. Yes, like yes. You're going to ultimately, you can zoom it in. That's why the science people are like so kind of, not atheistic, but like, they really want to know what the heck is going on because with these machines, they zoom in your body. It looks like a biological system. It's like it's not you. You are using some tool. So they are going into it. But soul, you cannot. Yeah, soul is like a mystic thing. You can't take a picture. You have to do your own kind of research and see the soul you can see. But yeah, the, the, the purpose of tarot really, it's like it's not a divination tool. It's more the, more the tool of self-realization. So now that deck can be universe and our body is like a universe, right? Our body is designed like according to Bible, like a um, form of God. So we have a similar body like God and all the books are saying how different chakras linked to different planets, everything. So you can see this is the universe or this is your body and all the psychological body. So in simple words, tarot can be just the mirror of your soul reflection of your soul, reflection of your psychology, because everything in the universe is here. Tarot is like a perfect system. It looks very simple, but actually if you get into it, numerology, for example, 78 cards, Golden Dawn Tarot, why 78? Why not 79? Why not 80? 80 is a nice number, right? So 78 actually comes, for, if you add the universal number, 12, it's like a number of full circle, 12 houses, zodiac, on and on. So you add these numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3, up to 12. And what you got is 78. So that's how you have 78 cards. And like this, there's so many layers of meanings. For example, five elements. So you got a major arcana is ether. 
than air, fire, water, like this. So then you got the numbers and letters, right? So this universe, you can see everything has a value, like amount and what it is. So you can everything, you can break down, that's that Kabbalistic mysticism, you can break everything down to letters and numbers, then you can go behind the curtain, edit it and change it. So what color is your house? Let's say it's white. And like, I want to play a trick on you and I do a little magic and you go back home, it's like, oh my God, my house is red. What the heck, am I crazy? That's what they can do, it's called Mandela Effect. That's, you know, quick essence of Mandela Effect, but that's how it works. It's used through Kabbalah. It's, you can manipulate just like a computer. You can change the, your website look and around the world it looks same. Same thing in Kabbalah. You can edit the actual stuff around you and it changes. So, and that's why people get this Mandela effect. They're all like, oh my God, what's this, that? It's a little demon play, but it takes a lot of energy to do it. So it's not easy, it's not cheap. Something they can just throw on a table. It's like, they got a big plan with it, eventually to edit everything, you know, hide everything. They edit the Bible already, I'm sure you know. So yeah, that's tarot. So you can learn so many things and I do tarot reading. I teach people also tarot. Those who want to learn how wanna, those who want to master kind of tarot and learn about mysticism. So I guide them. And then I have a spiritual circle here from India and they are Krishna devotees. And Krishna is He's a very mysterious personality. Some people tell you he was a king. He was a historic personality. Some tell you he was a god. Some tell you he was a coward boy. He's no god. He's just go walking around with go uh, cows. What are you talking about? So there's all this different understanding. And if you look like that, this, what are they like uh, scientific books of ancient India saying about Krishna? Krishna himself doesn't know he's god. He doesn't want to know he's god. He wants to make relationship with us like we are friends. So, the God aspect is there in terms of Vishnu and all the avatars of Krishna. But he himself, when you make a connection, it's not like you worshipping God, a Christian God on a cloud who's going to give you hell. It's more like you're making a relationship with some, it's called God of love. So you make a relationship with someone who really knows how to churn your heart to make you happy, to make you incredible life, like kind of thing. So Krishna worship is not like a Christian or Islam worship. It's like, if you don't do this, God going to come and kill you or you go to hell. Like, it had nothing to do with this. Krishna himself is like, what? I'm God? Are you serious? Yeah, that idea, but he's a mystic. It's like kind of, yeah, ultra mystic. So we have a little temple here and over there now last two years so many more and more and more people come here these trees very much are connected in one way because Krishna temple is always very purifying you can see over the history wherever they make them if it's like some ghetto or something people become more wealthy become more advanced like East Village in New York used to be a number one ghetto they sh used to shoot drugs on a street you can buy heroin on a market like on a um, what is it park Thompson Square Park they actually had them on the boxes, right? And now, because uh, they made a small, tiny Hare Krishna temple there, 50 years later or 60 years later, even celebrities want to move in this neighborhood, right? The apartments there, what used to cost $47, no joke. East Village rent used to be 25 bucks, an expensive place, 47, my friend told me. He used to have a place. So now, the same apartments are like, well, how much? Like 4,700? Right? So, and a whole neighborhood is like, you gotta go East Village if you go to New York. Before it was like, never go to East Village when you go to New York. It's like, you might never come back. So, same way, I'm thinking maybe that Hollywood area was holy place before. Maybe these Illuminati people, the hidden hand, whoever is controlling, manipulating, come and capture this place and put some dark energy here. And now, you know, universe again arrange some purifying place. The little Krishna temple there that looks insignificant, but actually influencing the whole neighborhood. And over time, 10 years ahead, it might turn into some very, you know, spiritual place, not a party place as well. You know, Miami has the very heavy party energy. Here, maybe it develops something more pure, more like people come to yoga, meditation. It's not about really like Krishna consciousness never encouraging you to convert. Rather, they encourage you, go look back your culture, where you come from. 
you see the universe from your perspective and you're like your God and do that don't don't just slack and do nothing and then if you don't like what your culture is presenting then you can take that but it's never it's almost like forbidden to convert people if someone is a good Christian and you're gonna go there like oh no 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 you should worship Krishna that is totally illegal based on our books so it's not about converting it's really turning people uh, minds back to where they come from and out of Hollywood that LA Hollywood right that illusioning you with all the TVs and all the gizmos and like the main thing is trying to get your attention or off, off the worship and they worship they got power over you tell you what to do is like all the story in a book there are many ancient books like how the two teams devils and demons they try to get each other so they go in each other's group like undercover and encourage each other to do some, like not worship oh you, why are you worshiping this why are you doing this spiritual practice this is useless so they get this encourage them to do everything right and then the power uh, goes down and then they come and boom take over so same thing Illuminati people tell Americans especially you got no culture there is no God we got some God coming up soon so you have faith in us we got money we got power we got military might everything is there why not worshiping us right but what they really do they huh, kind of block you as they cashing in so don't be blocked do your thing let them do theirs and see you know it's not they're all the way bad I'm not saying they're all the way bad they're trying to bring out the feminine aspect of God like there's two there's not only male female and you ask me about my little group actually our group is not about Krishna we don't worship male aspect of God at all we are all worshiping actually goddess but it's a secret it is not openly said so when you come in our group and it spend a little bit of time you realize we are only worshiping goddess only it's all about feminine energy it's all about understanding feminine energy but in the beginning they tell you oh it's all about Krishna because Krishna is has yeah he's dealing with the most amount of Shakti there is millions of girls and he can you know pacify them all we cannot we cannot even deal with one girl to make her happy yeah one girl because that's the idea right but Krishna can make millions of girls happy fully satisfied so if you have many girls you gotta be able to manage that those who want to play God yeah you should know that yes so if you ever join us that's that's what's behind the curtain is the goddess energy it is a goddess worship is making connection with goddess and yeah you can make a wish here and see if she can come in your life because that is like a very delighting masculine god aspect is always like kind of like a structure like a sun it rises every day same time it's like a germany factory kind of everything has to be law and order but um, in a female aspect of god is much it's very different it's more flexible it's my understanding it's all about the heart it's not about perfecting your mind so yeah So this is pretty much what our group about. Look, here's my little business card. You can throw it there. It's one for you. You can give it to a friend. There's a little, yeah, you can study palmistry or kind of get into it. Should I make you guys like a quick tarot reading to close it? Three cards, yeah. You want to? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? That's. You know, I do. I own a bookstore. Ha. Huh. And we have to, we do tarot reading. Oh, you do? So we have readers come and use our shop. Oh, really? To do their reading. Oh wow! Man. We have the we have the biggest oh, collection. Oh no way! Of that is so crazy. Florida, without a doubt. This is so crazy you're telling me this because I was walking around in Miami kind of speaking with the universe like upset I'm like where is the tarot shop because all shops here they carry one two three something I'm like we going there we have, we have 300 decks okay it's yeah three, now we're talking yes decks, at least. yes yes okay wow 
Yeah, I had Dalai Lama too. And you're Hungarian? Estonia. Estonian, sorry. Oh. Uh, previous owner of the store was Hungarian. Acha. Yeah, yeah, I'll come have a look soon. Uh, now our big party is going to be over. So yeah. now the saddles carry on their travels. So we got more time. And I'm going to oh, shoot in. Wow, what an alignment. Yeah, because we did that like a yoga. This is like a pinnacle of auspicious activities. You can do so many. And yoga is very complex. It takes like two, three days to prepare, to get all ingredients, da, da, da. And they did, I mean, we did a yoga just when we're meeting. So add some auspicious thing to it, I think. Some sign is there. Yeah. Okay, so that's my little gypsy thing, yeah. I like that there's shells included. Oh yeah, shells. I'm all about shells. Krishna used to live two places, right? I mean, three places. Rindavan, Mathura, Dvarka. Dvarka was the big beautiful city by the ocean it's actually described he made it like an island in the middle of the ocean and then there was like no one could actually go there unless they gave a mystic access and all these palaces so now once the Dvarka sink there's a whole story of how the women has come the same aliens come and just destroy the whole Dvarka by one flash and they all sink in the middle of the ocean so now if you go by the beach in Dvarka and if you pick one of those shells you can worship this same power than Krishna himself. So it's like extremely powerful, like a uh, source of energy, you can say, for everyday people. And for those who understand who's Krishna, it represents Krishna. Those in, from Dwarka. So now we are having here, it's a different place. Still, I believe these shells, because they all look like Makara, they're not probably Krishna, but they might be that Makara power there. That Makara energy of like, nourishment emotional nourishment just like these trees they supposed to emotional nourish you what about um conch does is that uh conch. krishna that blows a conch oh yeah the conch the this conch has an actually different story the conch was a demon and they killed the demon and it's like a symbol of his victory over the demon and it's blowing a conch yeah anytime conch is blown it blows away all uh, all ghosts when people, when those Hare Krishna people actually find this thing out, right now they, you know, they're like, maybe, maybe not. But if you make your video and you guys make a little test and you see it actually works, and more people come and say it actually works, then I tell you, these Hare Krishna people are going to make a temple close by here. Right? They will, yeah, they'll be going all in. Just right now, it's just like a couple of months old information. More or less, yeah. So we'll see. But they are also very, very interested. And like I said before, Indian people in general, because that's their dharma, that's their culture, that's some of the things they always want to see. It's like a legendary thing they never seen. Like maybe I send you the link. They making brass statues out of it, like a deities, and worship that to get the power out of the, the brass statue that represents this tree. So what, you know, if you actually have a tree, 